and here's a pear tree that we planted out. I've just been uh, I was giving it a gallon of water, quite frankly, uh, because again, it's such a dry uh, spring. The third dry year in a row. River levels are dangerously low. I've just been reading in Trout and Salmon magazine and seen for myself. Uh, yeah, there's uh, farmers, there's a ploughed field near us, no, no crops in it, isn't there? I heard on the radio that yeah. some farmers are not actually no, putting put seed in their in. ground. The ground is too dry, it won't germinate. Yeah. And unless we get substantial rainfall in the next few weeks, it's not going to be worth saying. You just buried the privy waste, haven't you? Yes. Uh, in other words, the poo and weed from our uh, outdoor tree. privy, which, uh, good. We're going to need in the future to get rid to put our excrement into the earth or, and then grow, um, obviously not root vegetables in the first year. Over. But it's perfectly okay, we've buried um, human excrement here, haven't we, Julie? You've you, you just oh, done it. <laughs> I, no, I do it every year. But, but you have to be very careful where you do it. The soil must remain undisturbed for a full year. Yeah, it, evidently. It so you're not going to get organisms splashed up. You wouldn't put leafy crops near it like your lettuce or... Could you grow any crops on this soil this year, which has had human waste yes, buried I in it, raw quite sewage? I would happily put beans in there. Yeah. Um, because their roots will go down in. Yeah. And you're only picking the top plant. Potato, not potatoes, yeah, not tomatoes, obviously. Yeah. marrows, courgettes, squash, anything where you're picking fruit off it. But it's got to be deep enough so that there's not organisms in the top few inches. So how deep have you buried the contents of the uh, it's, privy it's bucket there? It's got a good eight inches of soil over yeah. the, the top of it. So it, we're having this little drought here, you know, 2nd of April. Um, this is what the soil yeah. is looking like. Uh, on the 2nd of April we had... moisture uh, in about... A foot deep. Yeah. There's a bit more moisture in it, but yeah. I, I was reluctant really to dig this over because when you dig it over, you're losing the moisture. That moisture will now evaporate off. But I've got some sure. more onion sets which I want to put in, and we do a bit of rain this week, hopefully. Yeah. So tell us about onions because I well, can see a lot of onions here. Yeah. These are overwintered onions. Yeah. I've bought three different varieties this year to compare and try them. Yeah. These were planted at the end of October and they've been growing quietly through the winter. And because their roots are now all, already nice and deep, they're chasing the moisture down. Even if we don't get much rain or any rain, you, you will get a crop off of this now. Yeah. I may not get a crop at all off of the spring planted onion sets, which I'm going to put in now. And I will probably have to water them. So I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm only going to put in the ones I already bought. We've also got overwintered garlic, which are these sturdy chaps. We always put plant the garlic, winter, don't we, in the uh, um, uh, early winter, don't we? About the end of November. I yeah. could put them in November end of November. Early, but they've overwintered as well. Need some hoeing soon, obviously, to get rid of the weeds. But well, yeah, there's a good lot of them. Um, and look how the ground is cracking. You can see how, how dry it is. But these are still growing firm because their roots will be, oh, good yeah. six, eight inches down where that moisture still is. Yeah. We've also just planted out our potatoes. Yeah couple of days ago. Now this area I had mulched with compost manure, horse manure, covered it over with tarpaulins to let it rot down into the ground over the winter and I left it undisturbed. When we took the tarpaulins off a couple of days ago it was lovely and moist. So you've had to, let's get this right, you put as much dung in here as you could yes. and then you put tarpaulins over the earth. When did you, when did you apply them? Before Christmas. So right. This has been mulched down over winter. I only dug it just ready to plant. That's a lot moister, isn't it? Yeah. So tarpaulins, that's two that's two tips then for drought gardening. Use tarpaulins to keep the moisture, keep the moisture in. The moisture in. It also prevented weed growing over the winter, so of we course. just needed to fork this over. We've planted the potatoes fairly deep yeah. because they're gonna need to be protected from drying out. Also, we're now getting a bit of frost. Yeah. And then on top of that, can you see there's all this hair? Yeah. The sweepings from the, the barber's shop. Hairdresser waste, yeah. I sprinkle that over on the top. I've also put some grass cuttings over the top. This is since we've planted up. This is all to keep moisture in. Yeah. It shades the soil underneath, stops evaporation, and those items themselves will gradually rot down. Okay. They'll be being turned in as we earth up the potatoes. So this will be a lovely rich bed to grow other crops on next year. So in summary, our tips then for garden, uh, food gardening 
uh, in time of drought. Overwinter crops where possible. Yeah. Don't cultivate unless you've got to because you're going to lose moisture. Yeah. When you have cultivated, mulch with mulch with material like your grass cuttings. This is the hair waste. Strawy manure can go on the top. It won't yeah. put nitrogen when it's on the top. Shredded leaves. Um, if you're putting big plants in, you can put damp newspapers around, cardboard boxes like we put them yeah. around the marrows, courgettes, pumpkins, that sort of thing, to keep the moisture in. Yeah, right. Well, we're going to be seeing a bit more of this chap in the future, most likely. I think we will. And um, uh, keep me in work as a skin cancer surgeon, but uh, it's going to be quite an issue um, growing enough to feed ourselves. You might just like to come and look under these cardboard boxes which haven't been disturbed yet. Yeah. Today. The disadvantage of this system is it does look a mess. It's untidy, isn't it? But when you come to take the, the cardboard off, you find that's the soil surface here. Look how moist that is compared to that. So this hasn't been watered. This this has helped to keep in the winter moisture. So it'll now be there for the crops which I'm going to plant now. Okay, and I've just been watering um, the newly planted fruit trees with uh, water we've saved um, from the drainage system on the Apple Store through the winter. Okay, if anyone's got any um, ideas or videos, anything that you do, anything that you believe works um, concerning um, drought gardening, I'm particularly interested in food growing obviously, um, then please post them up here. I'd be delighted to um, see as many um, drought gardening videos as possible. And another question please, what varieties of vegetables, what types of vegetables are more drought resistant than others? For example, I grow the beet spinach, that's this type of spinach which has a big root, perennial, and I find that will be much more drought tolerant. It has a huge root that's gone down over the winter. Whereas I know if I put in the seed spinach now, it would very quickly bolt. I'd hardly get any leaves that mm. flower straight away. So that would be my tip. Grow beet spinach rather than seed spinach. Yeah. And if you've got any tips that you can share, that would be lovely.